excited. I am excited today. And that's why am I so happy? I'm alive. When you're alive, you wake up in the morning and you're still alive, you need to always thank God. Let us pray. Father Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you adoration. Thank you, Lord, for yet another opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for all the listeners listening. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, and your kindness. Father Lord, I commit this teaching into your hands. Take absolute control. Holy Spirit, take absolute preeminence and speak through me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father Lord, for the blessing that is attached to me doing your work, let it not pass me by. And for each one that is listening to me, Lord, Father, whatever it is that they are trusting you for, out of your mercy and compassion, please let it be granted upon them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. And at the end of the day, all glory, all honor will be unto you. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hello. I'm very, very happy. I'm alive. We're in the month of June. We're still alive. And I know that we'll see the end of the year in the mighty name of Jesus. We need to always have the attitude of being grateful. Always. No matter the circumstances. Today, we're going to talk about a topic titled, A Battle You Must Fight. A Battle You Must Fight. And we're going to take our text reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Verse 7 to 17. Book of Revelation chapter 12. Verse 7 to 17. It read does. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But it was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hauled on. That ancient snake called the devil. Or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was all to earth and his angels with him. Then, a, then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hauled and they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, they did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been all to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness, where she would be taken care of for a time, times and half a time, out of the snake's reach. Then from his mouth, the snake spoiled water like a river to overtake the woman and swept her away with a torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening his mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spilled out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Well, I'm sure you understand this, but for somebody that doesn't understand, um, this is talking about the enemy when he was thrown down and the angels were not able to overcome him until they overcame him with the blood of the Lamb. And then he was, of course, evicted from heaven. And now he's angry with the woman that conceived a male child, which is, of course, Jesus Christ. Now he chased the woman. The woman is Israel. The, the child is Jesus Christ. Now he knew that he couldn't overcome Jesus Christ. No, we're going to place our emphasis on verse 12. He says, the, um, verse 17, the dragon was enraged at the woman, Israel. And went off to wage war against the rest of our offspring. Those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus Christ. And I know that the person I'm speaking to or whosoever is listening to me, a group of people, I know that you're a child of God. I know, I believe, I hope so, that you're a child of God and you, you're evangelizing about Jesus Christ. But the plain truth is that, is that this Bible verse is telling us that. Is that the enemy is very angry with those that speak about Jesus Christ, those that keep the commandment of God. So whether we like it or not, whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, life is a battlefield. 
from the moment Adam and Eve sinned, the authority given to them, the dominion that God had given to Adam and Eve, he says, subdue the earth, multiply. He has given you dominion. He gave them dominion. But the moment they were disobedient, they gave that dominion to the enemy. I was um, speaking to somebody recently and the person said, oh, if there is God, why is there so much suffering? And my response was that God is not the one um, done making people suffer. That is so disheartening when you listen to that and people portray God as a very wicked, uh, callous um, God, but he is not. I told him plainly that the person in charge of the rulers of affairs of the world is the devil. And the only thing that the, the devil knows is destruction. So what do we expect? And the guy was just staring at me, you know, looking at me. And so when we look at it that way, that whether you're a child of God, whether you're not a child of God, but the life is a battlefield. But because you are a child of God, the enemy is angry with you. That's why the Bible says that he's an accuser of the brethren. So every day he accuses us. Every, every moment, you know, he roams about to and fro. So he accuses us constantly. So now we know that we're in a battlefield. Let us define what a battle is first. According to Freedom Dictionary, I got it on the internet. It says it is an encounter between opposing forces. So there's going to be, um, it's, it's two, two forces that are fighting. Maybe for a territorial domin dominance or maybe they are fighting because of money or something. And then the winner gets what they are fighting for. But now we're looking at it from the spiritual aspect of it. When we say you are fighting, like it's very well, there are some nations that might go to war for no reason, but I, I doubt it. There's a reason for them to fight, or oh, we're going to this territory because of certain, certain, and certain reasons. Now, as a child of God, you need to understand what you are fighting. Why are you fighting? Why should I come here and say there's a battle you need to fight? Why? Why should I bring up that? Now, I will list three reasons, three things, the purpose for you fighting is because you have been instructed. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 27 says that God has driven out the enemies and he says destroy them. He has driven out all your enemies. That's why it's very, you know, sometimes we're praying, 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 we're saying God, please don't. But God is just waiting for you to do something. You know, and you, you don't expect God to, maybe you want to start a business and then you want, oh Lord, Father Lord, I want to start a business. Okay. Yeah, you've prayed. So, um, are you expecting God to come down and help you to start um, making inquiry, finding out certain things? You know it doesn't work that way. It's when you start that God will, the will start supporting you. As you're taking one step, it, it leads you. It takes one step, it leads you. That's how it is. So now what's the purpose? You've been instructed. God said, he has driven out your enemies. He said, destroy them. So what are you supposed to do? You're meant to destroy them. The second thing is for you to recover all your stolen possession. From the camp of the enemy and um, isaiah chapter 49 isaiah chapter 49 verse 24 to 26 24 to 26 says can plunder be taken from warriors or captives be rescued from the fairs what this bible verse is saying is that is it possible for a general to go into the opposing um, um, enemies come and they start taking out all the prisoners of war. Now this is what the Lord said in verse 25. He says, but this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder retrieved from the fairs. Are we content with those who contend with you? And your children are we safe? Now God is telling you that whatever the enemy has stolen from you, whether legally or illegally, because you know sometimes in the past we might have entered a covenant out of ignorance. You might not even know. Maybe it was your parents that made that covenant with you, for you, without you knowing. Maybe maybe they were seeking for the for the food of the womb, and out of desperation they visited a shrine or they visited a, a voodoo or a cultist person, and the person says at a certain age you must bring this child to break a covenant or something. And then the voodoo or the occultist man dies. And you, maybe, unfortunately, the person's mother dies too. So you don't know nothing about it. And then you, every day you dream of this or somebody is holding you down because you have a covenant. Whether you're a child of God or not, 
Yes, all things have passed away. You are a new creature. But you need to break up that covenant. That's why God has given you mouth. He has given you your mouth to speak with. To say, I break every covenant. I would like you to pause now and think about anything that you think is bothering you. And you think you've prayed, you've done everything. I want you to say this prayer. I break every covenant that has been made on my behalf. Right now, I break it with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. You've broken it. You don't have anything to do with the enemy anymore. So whether you know of it, whether you went to, into the coven of the enemy, you went to take charms or something, you are lawfully captive. God is saying that, yes, he will set you free. So the, te the third purpose is for you to have a pillar in the temple of God. Pillar in the temple of God, yes. As a child of God, you have a crown. I remember a revelation I had about... um. I can't, I'm not very sure, but I think it's um, ending of last year or beginning of this year. And I was in a very beautiful temple, gold plated. And then I saw a crown. I wanted to grab it. And I heard a voice say, no, you can't get it yet. So as a child of God, we're all striving to get that crown. Let's read the book of Revelations chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 10 to 14. It says, since you have kept my commands to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Bringing us to this, that's very soon. There's going to be the tribulation hour, which is going to be very soon. I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has here, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You might say, oh, it's a church. No, you are a church. You are the church. We all make the church. So Jesus Christ is saying that anyone that is victorious at the end of the war, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. And I know that me and you will have our pillar. We'll have our temple in the in the pillar of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So now we've looked at three purposes for the battle. One, you have been instructed and you have to obey God's command. Secondly, you have to recover everything. Suffering is not your portion. Sickness is not your portion. Barrenness is not your portion. Fruitful without being fruitful in any area of your life is not your portion. You have everything that's been given unto you. So what you are meant to do now is to go. Of course, I'm not saying you should go. How do you see? Can we see any physical um, enemy? No, it's a spiritual warfare. So we all know now that there's a purpose for the battle. We're not just going to fight and be beating ourselves in the air and just fight without knowing a purpose. Without knowing, even when you want to pray, you need to think and pray of what you want to pray about. So we now know the purposes. But you might ask that, how can I fight a battle? I me, mean, I'm scared. Even there are certain individuals, even as children of God, they will say, no, me, I'm scared. I can't do deliverance for somebody. No, 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 I don't want trouble. And then I'll carry somebody else's load. And then they'll start pursuing me in the dream. <laughs> you know, everybody has their own uh, grace or whatever. But I think as a child of God, you shouldn't be scared of nothing. The moment you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you're already equipped. The book of Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to 12. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to 12. It says... I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and wages war. His eyes are like, okay, we're not going to go deep into that, but it's just telling us that when Jesus Christ returns, the angels will call those of us that are children of God, true children of God. He will say, come, come and eat the flesh of, of course, it's not cannibalism. Come and meet, come and see the people that, are, that, that have been tormenting the world. Come and look at them. And I know that when Jesus Christ comes, whether as an individual, if I'm dead before then, the dead will arose first. If I'm not dead, when Jesus Christ returns, I'll be raptured up there. My body is going to change straight. 
Still the same person, but a different person. And I'm, I'm praying for you that whatever will be a barrier to you, that when that trumpet sound, that you will not be able to make it. It will be removed in the mighty name of Jesus. So now, Jesus Christ is the mighty man of water. He's going to come back. He's going to be the one to judge. He's going to destroy the enemy. Now that you're a child of God, because you have confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, definitely you have that gene in you. You have a child, you give birth to a child, you'll say, oh, that child looks like you. Oh, the nose looks like you. The eyes look like you because the gene, the, the gene is speaking. Same thing. You are now a child of God. Everything that Jesus has, every characteristic of Jesus Christ, you also have it. That's why we're all striving to be like Jesus Christ. That's the best. You know, when you keep striving, the Holy Spirit will help you. So because you're a child of God, you already have that weapon. You already, you already strengthened. The book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 18, verse 30, 34 to 39, it says, Your arms has been, your hands are trained for war. And you have the strength for battle. God has trained your hands for war. And you have the strength for battle. You know, so many times, sometimes, even as an individual, I get tired. Of course, I'm human. I get tired. But what I just do is I say, God, please just give me the strength. I'm tired now. I need strength. And it gives me the strength. There are sometimes the only people who say, you're tired. Just pray and go to bed. Because it's a disastrous thing that you're reading the Bible and you're sleeping. Or you're praying and sleeping. You know, it's not very good. Better for you to pray five minutes fervently than have a night vigil of six hours and you're sleeping five hours, 30 minutes. It doesn't make sense, you know. So now, you add, your hand is strained. You have the strength for battle. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? We need to possess everything. You know, this poverty, poverty, sickness and all that is not, is not the will of God. It's because you've not accepted. You've not, you've not taken it that, no, I do not want this in my life. So I command you to get out. It will go out. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I know I'm speaking to somebody that is, that is you know, you, you are just tired. You're like, I've tried everything, I've done everything. What else? You need to command that spirit. God has given you the power. I remember um, 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 late Pastor Kenneth Egan said that he had a revelation and he was speaking with Jesus Christ and then a demonic spirit came and he said, um, he expected Jesus Christ to like tell the demonic spirit to get out. But the more that demonic spirit was standing, the more the vision was becoming blear. You know, he couldn't see Jesus Christ again. And this thing was being a barrier to him and Jesus Christ because they were having a conversation. And until he opened his mouth and said, I command you demonic spirit to get out now. That that vision came. And he asked Jesus Christ, why, why wasn't he able to do that? Jesus Christ said, he has given you authority. All you need to do is open your mouth. He has given you authority. Jesus Christ has died on the cross. He has risen. So we don't expect him to now do the same thing again. He has given you that authority. Use that authority as a child of God. And everything that is in your life that, that needs perfection will be perfected. In the mighty name of Jesus. So now, well, there are certain things you need to know before you go into the battlefield. Um, if you well, if you watch war films and then... Um, a camp and another camp and then you just see somebody without taking instruction without you just enter into the camp definitely the person is going to die definitely because he, he, there are certain things you need to first of all you know as if you're going into war you need to be trained you need to be fit medically i'm not a war person i'm, I'm not a i'm not a general in the army but i did when i was when i was a bit younger not too old i i did a program for a year and then they trained us though i didn't really participate but then you need to be uh, physically fit to be able to go into war zone there are certain things you need to ask yourself before you go into the camp before you say you want to fight any battle or you want to do certain things like you want to maybe if you think you want to cast out a demon from a friend or you want to do deliverance for somebody or even yourself or maybe you are experiencing certain things that has refused to move you've prayed you fasted there's certain things that are listed there for you to ask yourself that maybe this is where there's a problem. One of them is, whose camp are you in? The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 31 says that, If God be for us, who can be against us? That's a question. It says, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is with you, nobody can be against you. But are you with God? If you are not with God, everything will be against you. So it's a question that we need to ask ourselves. 
If God is for us, who can be against us? How are you sure you are in the camp of God? Because you know, sometimes you, you might still think you are still living holy. I, I know it's, it's a bit strange because I asked, I think I asked somebody a question that how would you know if the Holy Spirit has left you? And the reply was that you would know. You would know that maybe there are certain things you you might have been saying in the past and you don't see it anymore. Yeah, if you have the gift of discernment, you should be able to know. But if you are new, if, you, if you've just given your life to Christ maybe like a week ago, and then how do you know that God is still with you? How do you know that you are still in the camp of God? Because if you are, it, it will be a terrible, it will be a disaster. For you to be praying and be saying, Oh, you spirit of infirmity, I want you out. And the spirit of infirmity is looking at you like, Look at this one that just committed uh, adultery in the heart. And he's telling me to leave, leave. I will stay here, this is my home. You know, because there are some certain things, sins that uh, we might not think is sin, like lusting after somebody in the heart. Imagine terrible imagination. It's, it's, I'm telling you, it's a very, it's a, it's a real battlefield of the mind. You see, especially for men, when they, they see girls, you know, in a very lovely shape, dressed scantily, and then they begin to imagine things. In the Bible, that's adultery. Even though you did not have any sexual intercourse with the person, it's adultery. Or you just hate somebody for no reason. His mother. It is not only when you take a knife and you stab somebody. When you hate somebody, you don't like somebody for no reason, just dislike the person. You, you hate that person's gut. <laughs> and you know, we, as children of God, we call ourselves children of God. In the house of God, there's so much hatred. People hate themselves. You can't stand this sister. You can't stand this brother. And you find some people, they, I don't know. I'm not going to go into that because I'm not to judge anyway. So now you need to find out if you are for God. Let's read the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. Oh, yeah, everybody knows this. Everybody knows it. I think so. Um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life so if you're listening to me now and you you're not yet a child of God you don't even believe in what I'm talking about you just I don't believe I don't believe in Jesus why should I believe in Jesus you know this is what he's saying that whosoever believe in him shall have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. So the moment you don't, you are not a child of God. You are fighting against God. And I can tell you with all boldness that anyone that fights against God can never win. Never. Never, never win. So if you love God now, I pray. I want you now to accept Jesus Christ into your life so that you don't fight against God. Then another thing, you might be fighting, you might think you're fighting, yeah, you're fighting with God, but then you're fighting your own self. What do I mean by that? Ah, can I fight my own self? I've never, I don't have any physical injury or why should I fight my flesh? When, you're, when you've not killed the flesh, you're fighting against yourself. So victory is not sure. When the things of the, you know, fleshly desires, the things that in the past is still in you, you can't just let go of it. I've come to a stage in my life that sincerely, if they are showing any, um, you know, like, um, you know, uh, films that maybe they are kissing and all that, I turn it off. Because I don't want any imagination to come into my mind. So any things in the past that you used to do and then you find that you are still waging war with those desires, to go into that battlefield is going to be difficult. Because the enemy, you know, the enemy is an accuser of the brethren day and night. So he will come, he will say, oh, look, look at the person, look. Is she not the person that just watched a pornography film? Is she not the person that is just watching a film that is showing uh, sexual scenes? Is she not the one dancing to sexual music? You know, things like that. The enemy can have a, a, a hold in, in one's life regarding that. So we need to be sure. But are you, you are you, you could ask me that is it possible for somebody to win to 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 be able to overcome the flesh of course the book of first corinthians chapter 15 he says that there was one part that paul was saying that if somebody can marry marry but if you have that will will like him that grace for him not to get married 
then don't get married so every individual has that you you have that um that will in you determination like as an individual when i make up my mind to do something i do it when i don't want to do something i don't do if i don't want to do something you will know the enthusiasm is not going to be there my mind is not there but once i've made up my mind i'm going to do this i will do it no matter what it takes so we all have that in that that um that mindset we have that free will that god has given each one of us whether you're a child of god whether you're not a child of god that's why as children people that don't believe in christ is because they have that you can't force them you can't force them jesus christ is not even going to force them he says i'm knocking at the door so he's left for you to open some open they close it some open after some they chase him out isn't that sad and so we need to remember you need to be sure of the camp you belong to and you need to ensure that desires of the flesh have been killed when you kill the desire of the flesh you you'll be like a spirit you'll be a strange human being because the way you think the way you do things is just spiritual and people will think you're a weirdo which is meant to be because uh, the bible says that flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of god it's only spirit you have to live in the spirit to be able to do that so and you need to ensure that there's no form of idolatry in your life what is idolatry it's not about having an um, and a mouse, a statue of a mouse or a statue of a cow, and bound to it. Anything you place before God is idolatry. Do you place your work before God? Do you place your husband before God? Do you place your children before God? Do you place anything, your car before God? Do you place anything, even your leaders, do you place them before God? You rather um, obey your work? Would you rather do the, the things of God? Or you rather do the things of of your work you know there's some certain words that take you away from god like on sunday you cannot attend um, on church services because of work if you stick to it and you make up your mind that look church i have to i have to worship god work can stay i'm telling you you'll be surprised the way god will open doors for you it's just that um, spirit of faith that we need we need that gift of faith to be able to trust god completely and i'm praying for you right now that god will empower you with the gift of faith so that you'll be able to please God first. Please God first. He says, do my own and I will do yours. Ah, let's trust God. So once we know, once we've taken that precaution, we know that we belong to the camp of God. We know that we don't have any idolatry, that God is first. And we know that we've killed the flesh then. You can enter into the battlefield. You can go into the camp of the enemy and say, look, this, that, that. I need my blessing. Give it to me. I need my good health. Give it to me. I need my child. Give it to me. Even a child that has gone wayward. You call the child back. That child there is my child. So come out from the camp of the enemy. Release that child from me. He would obey. The only problem is that we don't know the authority we carry. And then when you have anything, you know, that will be an interest, you will say, look at this one talking. Remember the story of the sons of Scythians? He asked, he said, who, who are you? Let that not be your portion in the mighty name of God. And they were beaten. They were flogged. They were beaten and they ran out naked. That's a terrible thing to happen. Now, entering and maintaining victory. You have entered the camp of the enemy. You have gotten everything. You've collected all your possession. You've prayed. You've fasted. You've got everything you need. In fact, you're doing very well. In fact, you've come to a stage that when the enemy see you, they flee. Because the Bible says that when the enemy sees you, they flee. They come in one way, they flee in seven ways. But you, maintenance is very important. If you are in your camp, the enemy is on the other side. And then you've attained victory. You've gotten your geographical location. And then you slumber and sleep. They can still come at night. And plunder everything that you have. But that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So now... How would you be able to maintain it? How would you be able to have victory in this battlefield of life? How would you, that you've had a testimony yesterday, how would you have a testimony tomorrow? How would you maintain that testimony? How would you have a testimony tomorrow? You need to listen to your commander, your chief of army. And who is that person? The Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you can do nothing. Without the Holy Spirit, without listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, you can do absolutely nothing. Let's read the book of John chapter 14. 14. I might not be able to read all of it because of time. Verse 14. And from verse 16 to 27. 
he says and i'll ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you and will be with you forever the spirit of truth so let's let's um, jump when you have time please try and read the whole verse so let's read the book of 27 peace i leave you and my peace i give you i do not give you i do not give it to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid so now the holy spirit is there for you is there to teach you whatever jesus christ wants to tell you you know what the holy spirit is i'm sure you've i don't know whether you've listened to the to one of my messages about uh, the holy spirit i will implore you to go and listen to it and if the holy spirit permits me i'll still come back and talk more about listening hearing the voice of the holy spirit like as I'm talking to you now and you can hear him vividly so now he says that the Holy Spirit is there for you whatever the Father says to Jesus Christ Jesus Christ passed it to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit tells you the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth he doesn't say anything that he doesn't that Jesus Christ is not telling him to to say so whatever the Holy Spirit tells you is straight from Jesus Christ so are you ready to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit because there are so many times the Holy Spirit speaks to us and then we just ignore we just ignore we just this, this can't be the holy spirit it must be the, my flesh because it's not convenient for you once you listen to the voice of the holy spirit there are some battles that all you need to win the battle is just to be happy all you need is just to be happy and then the the enemy will become confused some battles is prayer and fasting some it doesn't even require fasting it just needs prayer as an individual there are certain prayers i pray sometimes i pray five minutes God answers. Sometimes I pray half an hour. God answers. Sometimes I have to do it with fasting. And there are sometimes I'm just happy. It's according to what the Holy Spirit tells me. When I have a problem, I go to him. I say, God, Jesus Christ, you said I should ask anything in your name so that your father will be glorified. This is my problem. Most times I would employ you to write whatever you want. I write my own specifically specific i say it's you that said that i should ask anything in your name and it will be granted i've come with my problem lord you said i should bring my body i write it down and the holy spirit tells me but in most in some cases he might not even answer me that particular day it might just be three days after it might be a day after it might be two days later sometimes if somebody approaches me oh can you pray for me or something you know like a prayer partner thing Instantly, he might tell me what I 